Scott Maxwell writes the Taking Names column for the Orlando Sentinel. Three times a week, his column focuses on the interesting, funny, and sometimes maddening things that make Florida, Florida. He's a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill School of Journalism. Scott Maxwell, welcome to Florida this week. Nice to see you. It is nice to see you as well. And yes, uh, maddening, you can't write about politics in Florida without including the maddening. <laughs> so Scott, uh, some of the people in Tallahassee who are pushing for a quick reopening of schools say, look, in Europe, some countries have reopened safely. We surely have the ability to reopen safely here in Florida. If they can do it, we can do it. Yeah, that's sort of a, an apples to orangutans comparison because uh, one of the things you look at is some of the countries in Europe have opened and, uh, safely and the model they have uh, opened with is a maximum of 10 to 12 students per class. And that's the only way they feel they can uh, allow for social distancing. We are so far out of the ballpark, we're across the highway and maybe in another city in this case, this state has never even come close to meeting class sizes that uh, voters demanded through a constitutional amendment, and the state hasn't even put any guidelines for getting anywhere remotely close to that. But this, as you said, the Florida voters did say a few years ago they wanted smaller class sizes. Whatever happened to that? Yeah, it was a little bit like the Florida lottery and medical marijuana and felons voting rights. Uh, there is nothing that Florida legislators hate more than citizens of this state trying to take democracy into their own hands. They usually try to thwart it. We got fair districts, we got the environmental amendment, so, so many of those things. Class size was a great example. Uh, uh, citizens thought that we can make this really clear. We say no more than 18 kids per uh, kindergarten class, no more than 25 in high school. It's in the constitution. How can they change it? Well, they did change it, as I think you are well aware, and they did it through really wily, wicked, creative ways, such as originally parents said, okay, this just needs to be core classes, because we don't care about if a band class or a chorus class has 40 people. We don't care about extracurriculars. Well, lawmakers just decided to call virtually everything an extracurricular. Suddenly, marine science and, uh, and AP English, those were no longer counted as core classes, and they could have a lot more. So we are starting from a place where classes have always been crammed, uh, full, and that's a bad place to be in a pandemic. Scott, everybody's worried about unemployment, but you're there in Orlando. A lot of the theme parks are, have cut back hours. They've laid off staff, uh, and the revenue is down. The number of people visiting the theme parks is down. How's the economy in Orlando doing? It is awful. It is uh, one of the two worst uh, local economies in the United States. A uh, pretty uh, widely viewed among major metros, Las Vegas and Orlando are the two most hardest hit uh, economies in, in the country. And that's for a pretty basic reason. People are not traveling, as you know. Planes aren't flying. If they are flying, they're only partially full. Our uh, hotel tax revenue, is, which is really the way you can measure whether people are, are traveling, was down 96% uh, the first month after this pandemic. So what that means is you just have a boatload of low income people who are really working on, living on the edges of poverty, uh, scraping to get by with no safety net, uh, have no net uh, right now at all except for unemployment. So are you seeing a rise in people standing in line for food? I mean, are, are people getting desperate? People got, people got desperate uh, from the second week of this thing. In fact, one of the first columns I wrote back in March was the nonprofit talking to about six different nonprofit CEOs that said we're being hit like never before. These were people who came in in their theme park uniforms to food banks when times were good because they couldn't make ends meet. And as you remember, people went uh, weeks, sometimes months without getting their unemployment checks. These are folks who lived on the edge and this pandemic just pushed them right over. Scott, one last question. Uh, Governor DeSantis, his administration is going ahead uh, with giving a contract to Deloitte to handle some aspects of Medicare here in the state of Florida. Deloitte is the same company that came up with that screwed up unemployment system that you referenced just a moment ago. So now the state is saying, Deloitte, right. you're, on, you're on track to get this new $100 million plus contract. What do you make of that? I think a lot of people are really troubled by that, and for darn good reason. I mean, I think this would be, I wrote in my column, this would be like eating a, a half of a fish saying, it gave me food poisoning, I can't wait to eat the other half. I mean, it doesn't make sense. We gave this contract to the company. Everyone has said it was screwed up. Uh, the governor has combined it, uh, uh, compared it to a jalopy, said it did not function. The governor has correctly said he was not part of the bidding process, but they're acting like this biz bidding process takes place in a vacuum. I think most Floridians would say one question in that bidding process should be, are you currently under investigation for screwing over the state right now? Which Deloitte is? And if you check yes to that box, 
contracts, maybe we need to give a, take second thought before giving you another contract. Scott Maxwell, thanks for coming on Florida this week. Good to see you. I hope you come back. Likewise. Thank you.